Now that we can maintain the AVL tree, let's talk a little bit about the time complexities. So first off, let's think about the, the basic process of building a tree. And as part of our argument here, we'll, we'll think about the minimum number of nodes we could have in an AVL tree. Um, so we'll think about the minimum number of nodes for each individual height. Okay, so height of zero, I'm gonna assume that that's a, a single node all by itself. So the minimum possible uh, nodes would be one. So just a one little node out there. Um, okay, when we get to a height of one, we've got a couple of different options. So we could have uh, something that looks like this or something that looks like this or something that looks like this. Um, those are all valid AVL trees. Of course, uh, these two have the minimum number of nodes possible at two nodes. Okay, um, so when we get to a height of two, it gets a little bit more complicated. Um, so height of two, we could have uh, something that uh, looks like this. Of course, we couldn't have just left left because then we'd do a rebalance and we'd have a height of one overall. Um, so we could also have uh, something that looks like this. And then we've got kind of the mirror images of both of those. Um, so it looks like overall, uh, we probably are gonna have a minimum of at least four nodes in our tree. Of course, we could also have things that are more dense, but we're just trying to figure out the minimum number of nodes. So it looks like uh, four is our answer. Um, we could continue this approach with a, a tree of size three, um, but writing out all the possible trees, making sure we've got valid AVL trees, and then figuring out which one has the minimum number of nodes seems a little bit awkward. Instead, I'm gonna take a slightly different approach. I'm gonna think about constructing the smallest possible tree. Um, so if I wanna make a tree of height three, what I could do is I, I could start with smaller trees and construct it. So what I could do is I could take a, a tree of size two, I could put a new root node on it, and in order to make this a valid AVL tree, I would, I would have to have a, uh, a child on the right that it would have a, a height of uh, three, two, or one, but I, I wanna make the smallest tree possible. So instead, what I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a tree over on the right with a height of size one. And again, I'm trying to use as few nodes as possible for the given height. So what I wanna do is I wanna pick these left and right subtrees with as few nodes as possible, but we've already identified the formula here. So uh, basically I could pick my uh, tree of height two that has a total of four nodes, and my tree of height one that has a total of two nodes. Um, so the total number of nodes in my tree would be the the root node, which is uh, one node, plus my four, plus my two. So uh, my left child, my right child, and the additional node that I'm adding on top. And of course, my total height we can see is three because I've got the height of my, my tallest uh, child plus the node above it. Okay. So it looks like we've got a, a total of, of seven nodes that at a bare minimum in a tree of height three. And I could continue this argument on and on, uh, basically to figure out the number of nodes in a tree of height four, uh, I take a tree that's one smaller in height and a tree that's two smaller in height as left and right subchildren of a new root node Seven plus four plus one is 12. Okay, in fact, we can come up with kind of a, a general formula here for a particular height. We take a subtree that is uh, one smaller, the minimum number of nodes at a height one less, plus the minimum number of nodes at a height two less, plus a root node. So we can come up with a general formula, a recurrence, of, uh, that will describe the minimum number of nodes for a tree of a given height. Okay, this is, this is really the key that we need in order to try and come up with some boundary or some estimate or proof that the height of the tree is actually logarithmic. So now we're gonna focus on this idea of height versus the number of nodes utilizing that formula. And our end goal is to show that the height is uh, logarithmic in terms of n. Okay, um, or another way to think about that is that n grows exponentially with height. Um, so trying to establish some sort of uh, base to a power sort of relationship. Um, one thing to observe here is that our n function, the n of height, is, is strictly increasing and it's always gonna grow by at least one because we're always adding on the, the height uh, uh, and the extra root node. 
Okay, so one of the things that gives us is some ability to do some simplification. We know that uh, if we're looking at something that is one smaller in height, that'll be greater than or equal to something that is two smaller in height. Okay, so we are going to use that and substitute in. Uh, basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to prove that uh, our number of nodes has to be greater than, than some exponential function in H and we're going to continually to use the, the greater than operation and kind of a, a series of operations to kind of demonstrate that we are in fact greater than, than some exponential of H. Okay, so again, this is our formula. Now we're going to go ahead and utilize the, the fact that uh, number of nodes in a tree that's one smaller is greater than or equal to the number of nodes in a tree that is two smaller. So we can kind of substitute that in and we know that the number of nodes in a tree of size h will be greater than twice the number of nodes in a tree of size h minus two. Okay. Okay, so basically we're just saying, hey, we can definitely do better than this. Okay, and again, we're trying to, to demonstrate that essentially n is growing exponentially with h. We can continue to kind of back substitute and use this relationship. So let's go ahead and do that. So we know that the number of nodes in a tree of height h is greater than twice as many nodes, uh, two times the nodes in a tree of h minus two. And we can take another step backwards and say that uh, the number of nodes in a tree of size two is greater than the number of nodes uh, in a tree of size, uh, sorry, the number h in the number of nodes in a tree of size h is greater than the num twice the number of nodes in a tree of size h minus two, and we know that uh, two times the number of nodes in a tree of size h minus two will be greater than two times two, another two times uh, the number of nodes in a tree of size h minus four, and we can continue this process on and on and on, and in fact. What we can do is we can kind of generalize it, and we know that the number of nodes in a tree of size h is greater than two to some power, two to the i-th, times n minus uh, n, the number of nodes in a tree of h minus two i. So we're just generalizing that formula. Again, we, we've just got this really, really general relationship. n of h is greater than two to the i n of h minus 2 to the i. So again, our end goal is to show that the total number of nodes is some exponential. And it already looks pretty promising, right? We, we've got an exponential here, but uh, but we've got this, this problem with, with i. i has, it, it's not clear how this is related to our height. Um, okay. So our, our job is, is to get rid of i, or actually rather our, our goal is to somehow express i in terms of height. Okay. Um, now another thing that, that we can use to our advantage here is we know that we've got some established base case where we actually know a particular value of, uh, of n. Uh, we already generated it in our table. So like some of the easy ones were the number of nodes in a tree of height uh, two or a tree of height one. So we can actually kind of focus on when will this formula be one of these two cases that we already know. This is very similar to our base cases when we do a, a, a work with induction. Okay, um, I'm only going to focus on even heights for now, but everything we're doing will actually generalize to odd heights as well. So I'm just going to focus on this idea of, of somehow replacing i with an expression in terms of h. Okay, so let's look at a concrete example. If we're trying to figure out the minimum number of nodes that we might have in a tree of height 12, uh, that'll be more than twice as many, uh, two times the number of nodes we have in a size of tree of size height 10, which will be more than four times as many nodes as we have in a tree of size eight, and so on and so on until we get to our base case, a tree of size two, which we already, uh, a tree of height two, which we already know. Okay, so in order to figure out this i, we basically have to figure out how many steps are involved in this chain. So I'm just gonna jot out a quick table here. So it's going 12, 10, eight, six, 
4, and then 2. Uh, and so at uh, each step here, we increase our power of 2. So it looks like for this particular problem, i ends up being 5. Um, and so we could study this a bit further and try and derive a general relationship for the uh, height versus our value of i. And uh, what we would come up with is that i is equal to height over 2 minus 1. So in this particular example, uh, that would be uh, 12 over 2 minus 1, which is 6 minus 1, which is 5. So it, it looks pretty promising. OK, so we've kind of uh, derived a general expression here for i versus the height. Now again, we're just focusing on, on the even cases here, but this, we can generalize this and repeat the same process for the odd case. Um, OK, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, substitute this in. So we know that the number of nodes in a tree of height h will be greater than 2 to the power of i, h, minus, h over 2 minus 1, uh, times our base case. OK, so um, great. We, we've got an, uh, got an expression here that we can work with. I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, throw away the constant term here and uh, change this to a, a greater than or equal to. Um, so we'll uh, go ahead and take the log of both sides. And we have kind of already kind of clearly expressed h in terms of a, a um, log n, or rather that n grows exponentially with h. And we've also got our, our log is actually a log base 2. Um, OK, so at the end of the day, what's really critical here is that our height uh, is log base 2 of n. Um, so we've kind of got the, these two bounds. We've got uh, kind of this idea of a very, very dense tree where the height is uh, logarithmic in n um, versus the more scraggly tree, which might be uh, twice as tall as the really, really dense tree, but it's still logarithmic in n. So we've got somewhere between uh, twice the log of n and log of n. Okay. Um, so on to time complexities. Uh, so the rebalance operations do a fixed amount of work. It's always just juggling three nodes and four trees. It's basically uh, several, uh, there are several different ways to implement this. One of the ways is just with a sequence of if statements determining which of the four cases you have. And all four cases are, are basically the same amount of juggling around. So A, individual rebalance, is a constant time operation, or can be. So Maintaining the overall properties of the tree, uh, remember they're being maintained incrementally by doing insert, which is two pieces, the binary search tree insert, which is uh, uh, dependent on the height of the tree. And then this uh, travel up the tree and rebalance is necessary, which we might have to go all the way up the tree h steps, and each step do a constant amount of work to do some rebalancing. Okay, okay so overall time complexity of the insert will be the sum of those two things. Basically, it'll depend on the height of the tree. Okay, We can make the exact same arguments for the remove. The binary search tree remove depends on the height of the tree. And then we have to go and possibly rebalance the tree as we travel back up. And of course, over, our overall height is log base 2 of n, uh, theta of log base 2 of n. So binary search tree insert is logarithmic, remove is logarithmic. Um, the AVL trees insert is logarithmic, the remove is logarithmic, contains is also going to be logarithmic, min is going to be logarithmic, as is max. So uh, we've achieved our goal here. We've got sublinear times for all of our major operations. Uh, none of them are constant time, but all of them are, are pretty good. They're all sublinear.